This video will be discussing the risk factors associated with lung cancer. A risk factor can be described as any substance or condition that increases one's chance of getting cancer. So to start off with, what is the number one risk factor in all lung cancer patients? You guessed it, smoking tobacco. Smoking is related to more than 85% of lung cancer cases in Canada. Of more than 7,000 chemicals in tobacco smoke, at least 250 are known to be harmful. And among those harmful chemicals, at least 69 are known to cause cancer. Not only is it harmful towards yourself if you smoke, it's, it's also harmful towards those around you. As mentioned before, cigarettes contain many harmful chemicals that are carcinogenic. Just to give you an idea, here are a few of the hundreds that, we, that would be present in each puff. It includes acetaldehyde, inorganic lead, tar, nicotine, carbon monoxide, ammonia, hydrogen cyanide, DDT, and the list just goes on and on. In short, it's safe to say that smoking is literally a poison that can slowly deteriorate your body and increase the risk for a multitude of illnesses, including lung cancer. So how does smoking actually cause cancer? To simplify, the chemicals in cigarettes essentially cause genetic changes within lung cells that can lead to the development of cancer. However, the risk of developing lung cancer is influenced by how long a person has smoked for, their age when they started smoking, and the number of cigarettes smokes a person smokes each day. The second risk factor associated with cancer is secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke is what smokers exhale and what rises from a burning cigarette, pipe, or cigar. It's also called environmental tobacco smoke or involuntary or passive smoking. Secondhand smoke contains the same chemicals as smoke that is actively inhaled, so it essentially contains the same health risk as actually smoking. No amount of exposure to secondhand smoke is considered safe. Approximately 3,000 lung cancer deaths occur each year among adult non-smokers in the United States as a result of exposure to secondhand smoke. In fact, the U.S. Surgeon General estimates that living with a smoker increases your risk of developing cancer by 20 to 30 percent. Exposure to secondhand smoke irritates the airways and has immediate harmful effects on a person's heart and blood vessels, and as a result, it is a key risk factor among non-smokers. The third risk factor for lung cancer is radon. Radon is a colorless, odorless, tasteless, radioactive gas that comes from the natural breakdown of rocks and soil. In the outdoors, radon gas is diluted by fresh air, so it's not usually a concern. But radon can seep into a home or building through dirt floors or cracks in the basement foundations. It may reach unsafe levels in enclosed, poorly ventilated homes or buildings because of seepage into the basement. Breathing in radon gas can damage cells that line the lungs. In order to ensure that there are low levels of radon within your home, you can test and reduce these on a regular basis in using short-term and long-term detectors. A short-term test remains in your home for 2 to 90 days, whereas a long-term test remains in your home for more than 90 days. All radon tests should be done for a minimum of 48 hours to ensure proper results. A short-term test will yield faster results, whereas a long-term test will give a better understanding for your home's radon levels year-round. You want to ensure that your radon levels measure less than 4 uh, PCIs per liter of air. There are many ways to reduce radon within your homes, and the first is soil suction. Soil suction prevents radon from entering your home by drawing the radon from below the home and venting it through a pipe to the air above your home where it can be quickly diluted. The second is completing diagnostic tests during the initial phase of the installation to help develop the best radon reduction system for your home. Third, you can seal cracks to limit the flow of radon into your home, thereby making other radon reduction techniques more effective and cost efficient as well. And finally, you can install a heat recovery ventilator, which can increase ventilation and help reduce radon levels in your home. For more information on this, you can visit the EPA or Environment Protection Agency website to learn more about how you can control radon levels within your own home. The final risk factor that will be discussed today is asbestos which is a group of minerals that occur naturally. It's been used widely in building materials and many industries, and exposure to asbestos fibers in the air that people breathe increases the risk of lung cancer. The risk of exposure is highest for people who work with asbestos, such as miners or those working in manufacturing, and studies have shown that a combination of smoking with asbestos is especially hazardous. Factors affecting the risk of developing an asbestos-related disease like cancer include dose, 
how much asbestos exposure you get, duration, or how long you get, you get this exposure for, the size or shape of the fibers, the source of the exposure, as well as individual risk factors including whether a, a patient has previous habits of smoking as well. When asbestos fibers are breathed in, they may get trapped within the lungs and remain there over a long period of time. And over time, these fibers can accumulate and cause scarring and inflammation, which can affect breathing and lead to serious health problems. As asbestos has been classified as a known human carcinogen by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the EPA, and the International Agency for Research on Cancer. To summarize, this video has discussed four risk factors for lung cancer, including smoking tobacco, secondhand smoke, radon exposure, and asbestos. For more information on anything discussed in this video, visit the National Cancer Institute at the National Institutes of Health website or the EPA, United States Environmental Protection Agency website.